Good morning. Good morning, distinguished delegates. I call to order the 10th plenary meeting of the 22nd session of the Assembly. This morning, we will consider the draft resolutions before the Assembly. We will then hear the report of the Credentials Committee. Finally, we will adopt the report of the 22nd session of the Assembly. Some draft texts have only been made available very late last night, since we must conclude our work today as envisaged in Rule 56 of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly, and as was also done in the past, we shall now proceed to take action on all drafts before us. And we shall begin by reverting to Agenda Item 16, consideration and adoption of the budget for the 22nd financial year. Here, we take up the report of the working group on the program budget, the draft resolution on the program budget for 2024, and the proposed program budget for 2024. We will first turn to the report of the working group on the program budget. You have before you the report of the working group contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 working group on program budget CRP1, which has been submitted by the chair of the working group on the program budget, Ambassador Senia Milenkovic. May I take it that the Assembly wishes to adopt the report of the Working Group on the Program Budget contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 <laughs> Working Group Program Budget slash CRP 1? If I see no objection, the report of the Working Group is adopted. The Assembly shall now take action on the draft resolution on the program budget for 2024 contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L2. I now give the floor to the coordinator on the budget, Ambassador Xenia Milenkovic from Serbia, to introduce the draft resolution. Ambassador, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President, for giving me the floor and uh, good morning to all. Um, the 2024 proposed uh, program budget was submitted to the 22nd session of the Assembly by the Registrar of the Court. The Assembly has been provided with statements by the Registrar as well as statements from the Chair of the Committee on Budget and Finance, the External Auditor and the Chair of the Audit Committee. The relevant documentation will be contained in Volume 2 of the official records of the 22nd session. The draft resolution on the program budget for 2024, dated uh, 13 December 2023, has been distributed by email. The draft resolution contains 17 sections from A to Q, addressing various aspects of the budget. The resolution was discussed during informal consultations in the Hague Working Group this year and in the Assembly's Working Group on Program Budget. The budget as set out in the draft resolution amounts to a total of 170, uh, 187,084,300 euros, which, is, which represents a 7.99% increase on the 2023 three approved budget, including the host state loan. It is my conclusion as the coordinator that there is consensus and therefore I would like to submit the resolution for the consideration of the assembly. I would like to thank the Committee on Budget and Finance, the external auditor, the audit committee and the court for their contributions. I also wish to thank the focal points for the budget subtopics, the budget management oversight and premises, Ambassador Jaime Moscoso Valenzuela from Chile, and Mr. Julian Camilo Silva from Colombia, respectively. And now that I have read through, <laughs> through the, the official notes, um, I would like to say a few words, if you don't mind, on a personal note. Um, 
first of all, um, um, it's been another year of uh, difficult and uh, a long road to the budget. So we finished last night sometime before midnight. I'm not, uh, not really <laughs> exactly sure. And um, in that regard, I would wholeheartedly like to thank all the delegations that engaged proactively in the discussion, and all of them uh, showed tremendous flexibility uh, to lead us to the result uh, uh, that we achieved, which, as I said, is 7.99% of increase in comparison to the 2023 program budget. So my thanks really goes to all the delegations. Um, Madam President, um, thank you uh, for um, trusting in us that we can do this without you and uh, your support throughout this year, it wouldn't be possible. So I'm, I'm really, really very personally thankful to you, as well as to, as to President Hofmanski, who was also there with us all the time. Uh, the Registrar, Osvaldo, I mean, he stayed with us uh, every night, <laughs> all night, to do the calculations. It's really, I mean, um, um, you and your team, it was an invaluable support to the budget facilitation and all the delegations in this process. Thank you so much. Um, without Secretariat, Renan, Marisa, Nuria, and uh, the whole team, again, this would not be possible. And I really thank them from the bottom of my heart for uh, assisting us in this process and being there for us all the time. I would like to uh, extend um, really personal and uh, wholeheartedly thanks to the Vice Presidents, Bob Ray from Canada, Beatrice, Chris, the whole Canadian team for really making uh, our time in New York memorable and helping us here. This is not for us from The Hague like a natural environment. Um, also, the Czech Republic, uh, the Vice President uh, from The Hague, Katerina Sequensova and Martina, uh, for supporting us uh, throughout. I know they are not here, but uh, they know that, uh, that we, we really thank them a lot. And, of course, um, last but certainly not least, I would like to thank um, our excellent, more than excellent legal advisor from the Embassy in Serbia in The Hague, uh, Maria Stajic Radivojša, who was um, at many times more a facilitator than I was this year. Thank you very much, Madam President. I, I thank you for the introduction and, uh, of the report, uh, the resolution, and for your efforts uh, throughout this uh, very excruciating journey. Um, it was not easy. I had no doubts that you would succeed, but it did take a lot of effort from your part and, and many others that you have mentioned, and of course, all of you who participated in the, in the negotiations. So I, I really thank you. Sorry? Just one more sentence. Forgot one thing. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, sorry, because I don't see Racine in here from the OTP. Oh, Racine. Thank you so, so much. Sorry, I mean, I, because I was looking at the, but I didn't see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Beautiful. thank you. Now we are, everybody has been <laughs> thanked. And uh, it did take a lot of people to, <laughs> to achieve this result. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And uh, now is the time for adoption. Uh, is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before taking action on the draft resolution? I see none. May I take it that the Assembly wishes to adopt the draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L2 without a vote? I see no objection. The draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L2 is adopted.
Is there any delegation wishing to explain its position after the adoption of the resolution? I see none, thank you. We shall now proceed to take action on the proposed program budget for 2024 contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash 10 as read in conjunction with the recommendations of the working group contained in its report. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before taking action on the proposed program budget? I see none. May I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt by consensus the proposed program budget for 2024 contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash 10 as read in conjunction with the recommendations of the working group on the budget contained in its report. I see no objection. It is so decided. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position after the adoption of the program budget? I see none. Uh, again, I wish to uh, express appreciation on behalf of the Assembly to all of you participating in these consultations, but also I, I to express appreciation for the assistance which the Chair of the Committee on Budget and Finance, Mr. Werner Drummel, has provided at this session. This Assembly has thus concluded its consideration of Agenda Item 16. The Assembly will now take action on the draft resolution on cooperation contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L7. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before we take action on the draft resolution? I see none. May I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt by consensus the draft resolution on cooperation contained in document ICC ASP slash 22L7? I see no objection. The draft resolution on cooperation is adopted. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position after the adoption of the resolution on cooperation? I see none. The Assembly has thus concluded its consideration of agenda item 18. The Assembly <clears throat> will now take action on the draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L5 entitled Review of the International Criminal Court and the Rome Statute System. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before we take action on the draft resolution? I see none. I thank you for you. I thank you and I take now that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt by consensus the draft resolution on the review of the International Criminal Court and the Rome Statute System contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L5. I see no objection. The draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L5 is adopted. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position after the adoption of the resolution? I see none. So the Assembly will now take action on the draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L6 entitled Implementation of the Tenure Policy. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before we take action on the draft resolution? 
I see none. May I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt by consensus the draft resolution on the implementation of the tenure policy contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L6? I see no objection. The draft resolution contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L6 is adopted. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position after the adoption of the resolution? I see none. The Assembly has thus concluded its consideration of agenda item 13. The Assembly will now take action on the draft resolution on the election of members to the Committee on Budget and Finance of the International Criminal Court contained in document ICC ASP slash 22L9. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position before we take action on the draft resolution? I see none. May I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt by consensus the draft resolution on the election of members to the Committee on Budget and Finance contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L9? I see no objection. It is so decided. Is there any delegation that wishes to explain its position after the adoption of the resolution? I see none. Ah, oh, yes, I do see. <laughs> Kenya has the floor and then Mexico. Kenya. Thank you very much, Madam President, and good morning, dear colleagues. We welcome the adoption of this resolution by consensus, as has earlier been indicated by the facilitator, for whom we have profound respect for her great work. It remains and behoves us as state parties to ensure that this resolution is implemented in a manner to make the Committee on Budget and Finance operate in an efficient and effective way. The work of the Committee of Budget and Finance is highly important, and we must facilitate it to make it fit for purpose. One way of doing this, Madam President, is to accord their reports and recommendations with greater reverence and veneration. As state parties, we must also ensure that the committee is fully constituted at all times. We cannot be seen to have expanded its membership for expansion's sake. With this, it is the understanding of this delegation that the issue of term limits will commence at the next election cycle without prejudice to any current or sitting members. So now that we have the floor, Madam President, we wish every delegate safe travels back home, safe stays for the ones who are saying, and happy holidays. I thank you, Madam President. I thank you, and I now I give the floor to Mexico. Muchas gracias, señora Presidenta. México quisiera expresar sus consideraciones respecto de la resolución sobre la composición del Comité de Presupuesto y Finanzas, con el objetivo de dejar constar la posición de nuestra delegación. En primer lugar, extendemos nuestro profundo agradecimiento a la facilitadora por sus incansables esfuerzos y dedicación a lo largo de este año. Reconocemos que esta tarea no fue fácil y valoramos su compromiso. Las negociaciones en torno a la composición de este comité han sido un desafío, ya que tocan las fibras más sensibles de la organización, la representación geográfica equitativa. Durante las consultas, México abogó por encontrar un balance entre la necesidad de garantizar una representación geográfica equitativa en el comité sin que ello genere un impacto presupuestal desproporcionado, especialmente en un momento en el que muchos estados parte enfrentamos dificultades económicas y políticas de austeridad. Durante las negociaciones buscamos una solución que fuera justa y exploramos las diversas opciones que ya han sido expuestas por la facilitadora. 
en un ejercicio de flexibilidad, incluso exploramos un incremento en la composición que fuera razonable. Desde el punto de vista de nuestra delegación, la decisión de aumentar en un 40% la composición del comité genera un impacto presupuestal importante y nos deja dudas sobre la efectividad del funcionamiento en el futuro. Considerando que esta fue la solución que encontró mayor apoyo, México se sumó al consenso. Continuaremos comprometidos con el funcionamiento de la Corte, al tiempo que permaneceremos atentos al impacto de esta decisión y continuaremos ofreciendo soluciones que se ajusten a la realidad económica de nuestros países. Muchas gracias. Uh, muchas eh, gracias. Is there any other delegation that wishes to explain its position at this stage? I see no further requests from the floor. So now we can um, proceed to agenda item 7B, report of the Credentials Committee. I give the floor to the chair of the Credentials Committee, Ambassador Jane Gasu Aeto, Ghana, to present the report of the Credentials Committee contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L8. Ambassador, you have the floor. Madam President, distinguished delegates, the report of the Credentials Committee is contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L8. The Credentials Committee adopted by consensus the draft resolution contained in paragraph seven of the report, accepting the credentials of the representatives of the state's parties referred to in paragraphs four and five. Having received an additional original credential this morning, I suggest paragraph four is amended accordingly by including Guatemala. Therefore, the corresponding modification will also be made in paragraph five. The committee recommends to the assembly the adoption of the draft resolution contained in paragraph 10, by which the assembly would adopt the report of the credentials committee. Thank you, Madam President. I thank the chair of the credentials committee for introducing the report. May I take it that the Assembly wishes to approve the report of the Credentials Committee as contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L08 as orally amended? I see no objection. It is so decided. And we have thus concluded our consideration of agenda item seven. The Assembly will now consider the draft report of the 22nd session. Before proceeding to adopt the report, I invite Mr. Abdou Doye, Senegal, the rapporteur, to introduce the draft report contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L1. Merci, Madame la Présidente. J'ai l'honneur de présenter le, le projet de rapport de l'Assemblée des États partis au statut de Rome de la Cour pénale internationale, qui a tenu sa 22e session au siège des Nations Unies à New York du 4 au 14 décembre 2023. Le rapport figure dans le document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L.1. Tous les renvois nécessaires aux résolutions adoptées par cette assemblée seront reflétés dans le rapport Le cas échéant. Les documents officiels de la 22e session de l'assemblée seront publiés en deux volumes. Le volume 1 contiendra le rapport de l'assemblée composé de trois parties. La première partie comprend les débats de la session et est divisée en deux chapitres. Le chapitre A, intitulé Introduction, constitué des paragraphes 1 à 14 fournit des informations factuelles sur la convocation et la participation à la 22e session. L'ouverture de la session, la composition du comité de vérification des pouvoirs, 
l'adoption de l'ordre du jour et l'organisation des travaux. Le chapitre B, intitulé « Examen des questions inscrites à l'ordre du jour de la 22e session de l'Assemblée » porte sur les travaux de la 22e session. Il fournit des informations factuelles sur les activités de l'Assemblée concernant chaque point de l'ordre du jour de la session. Il fait référence aux divers résultats concernant les activités entreprises, les résolutions et décisions adoptées, les recommandations formulées et les accords conclus par l'Assemblée. Le chapitre B est divisé en 19 sections. Le paragraphe 15 de la section 1 concerne l'élection de la présidente pour les 23e, 24e et 25e sessions de l'Assemblée. Le paragraphe 16 de la section 2 concerne l'élection des deux vice-présidents et des 18 membres du bureau pour les 23e, 24e et 25e sessions de l'Assemblée. Les paragraphes 17 à 19 de la section 3 concernent les États présentant un arriéré de contribution. La section 4, paragraphe 20 à 21 du projet de rapport concerne les pouvoirs des représentants des États partis à la 22e session. Les paragraphes 22 à 23 de la section 5 font référence au débat général qui a eu lieu au cours de la 22e session. La section 6, paragraphe 24 à 26, fait référence au rapport sur les activités du bureau dont l'Assemblée a pris note. Le paragraphe 27 de la section 7 concerne le rapport sur les activités de la Cour dont l'Assemblée a également pris note. Le paragraphe 28 de la section 8 fait référence au rapport du Conseil de direction du Fonds d'affectation spéciale au profit des victimes et à la déclaration de son président dont l'Assemblée a pris note. La section 9, paragraphe 29 à 31, concerne l'examen de la Cour pénale internationale et du système du statut de Rome. L'Assemblée a adopté la résolution par laquelle elle a en outre décidé de proroger pour une année supplémentaire le mandat du mécanisme d'examen. L'Assemblée a également adopté par consensus la résolution par laquelle elle a décidé de mettre en œuvre une politique de titularisation à compter du 1er janvier 2025. Elle a à ce propos demandé au mécanisme d'examen de faciliter ces discussions. La section 10, paragraphe 32 à 42, font référence à l'élection de six juges de la Cour pour la période 2024 à 2033. Les paragraphes 43 à 45 de la section 11 portent sur l'élection des membres du comité du budget et des finances. La section 12, paragraphe 46 à 50, concerne l'examen et l'adoption du budget du 22e exercice financier. L'Assemblée a approuvé le rapport du groupe de travail figurant dans le document ICC ASP slash 22 slash WGPB slash CRP slash 1. Elle a également adopté le budget programme pour 2024. En outre, l'Assemblée a adopté la résolution concernant le budget programme qui couvre notamment les domaines suivants. Le budget programme pour 2024, comprenant les autorisations de dépenses, s'élève à 1 187 84 200 euros et les tableaux effectifs pour chacun des grands programmes. Il est déduit de ce montant les versements effectués au titre de remboursement du prêt consenti par l'État hôte. Le fonds de roulement pour 2024. Les contributions en souffrance. Le fonds en cas d'imprévu. Le barème des cotes parts pour la répartition des dépenses de la Cour. Le financement des autorisations de dépenses pour 2024. Les locaux de la Cour. Le transfert des fonds en grand programme au titre du budget programme approuvé pour 2023. L'audit, le contrôle de la gestion budgétaire, l'élaboration de propositions budgétaires, une approche stratégique pour une amélioration du processus budgétaire, les ressources humaines, 
les renvois par le Conseil de sécurité, la stratégie quinquennale relative aux technologies et à la gestion de l'information, les amendements aux règlements financiers ou aux règles de gestion financière, les visites familiales pour les détenus indigents et les voyages. Les points ci-dessus et, su et ceux contenus dans la résolution seront reflétés dans le rapport final. Le paragraphe 51 de la section 13 porte sur l'examen des rapports d'audit. Cette question est traitée dans le rapport du groupe de travail sur le budget programme. Le rapport du commissaire au compte, le projet du budget programme pour 2024 et les rapports du comité du budget et des finances figureront dans le volume 2 des documents officiels. La section 14, paragraphe 52 à 53, indique que l'Assemblée a adopté la résolution sur la coopération. Les paragraphes 54 à 55 de la, résolution de la section 15 concernent les amendements au statut de Rome et au règlement de procédure et de preuve. L'Assemblée a adopté la résolution ICC ASP-22 RES.1 sur les amendements au règlement de procédure et de preuve, à savoir la règle 69 bis et la règle 140 ter intitulée respectivement notification judiciaire des faits jugés dans les jugements définitifs et poursuite de la procédure en cas d'absence permanente d'un juge. L'Assemblée a également adopté la résolution ICC ASP bar slash 22 slash res.2 par laquelle elle a amendé l'article 39 paragraphe 2 alinéa B du statut de Rome. Elle a pris note du rapport du groupe de travail sur les amendements. La section 16 paragraphe 56. L'Assemblée a pris note des activités entreprises en 2023 pour commémorer le 25e anniversaire de l'adoption du statut de Rome. Le paragraphe 57 de la section 17 fait référence à la décision concernant les dates et lieux des prochaines sessions de l'Assemblée des États partis. Le paragraphe 58 de la section 18 rend compte des décisions concernant les dates et les lieux des prochaines sessions du comité du budget et des finances. Comme par le passé, le rapport sur la résolution d'organisation générale ne comportera pas de paragraphe distinct car les décisions y sont prises, qui y sont prises sont déjà reflétées dans les différentes parties du rapport. La section 19 traite des questions diverses. Les paragraphes 59 à 60 concernent les fonds d'affectation spéciale visant à financer la participation des pays les moins avancés et autres États en développement aux travaux de l'Assemblée. La deuxième partie du rapport contiendra les observations et recommandations de l'Assemblée concernant les rapports des auditeurs, les recommandations de l'Assemblée relatives au projet de budget programme pour 2024 et les observations et recommandations de l'Assemblée sur des questions ayant des incidences, des incidences financières et budgétaires. En ce qui concerne la partie 3, je suggère que le secrétariat soit invité, comme par le passé, à incorporer dans le rapport final les résolutions adoptées par l'Assemblée à sa 22e session. Les annexes au rapport de la 22e session comprendront le rapport de la commission de vérification des pouvoirs, le rapport du groupe de travail sur le budget programme, la déclaration faite par le président du comité du budget et des finances, les déclarations faites par les États pour expliquer leur vote et une liste de documents. Je voudrais demander aux délégations qui ont des corrections linguistiques et rédactionnelles dans le texte, dans n'importe laquelle des langues, de bien vouloir les soumettre directement au secrétariat. Les corrections seront ensuite intégrées au document officiel. Madame la Présidente, je termine mon exposé sur le projet de rapport sur la 22e session de l'Assemblée en recommandant son adoption par celle-ci. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le rapporteur, de l'introduction du rapport de cette session de l'Assemblée.
And now we shall begin the adoption of our report. I propose that we proceed chapter or by chapter or section as appropriate. I request delegations wishing to propose editorial or technical corrections to please contact the Secretariat directly. So we now go to chapter one, uh, A, introduction. And uh, does the assembly agree to adopt paragraphs one to 14 within this chapter A? Section, chapter A is adopted. Now we go into chapter B, para, uh, section one. Section two, section three, section four, Section five, section six, section seven, section eight, section nine, section 10, section 11, section 12, section 13, Section 14, Section 15, Section 16, Section 17, Section 18, Section 19, so chapter B, sections 1 to 19 are adopted. So, may I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to adopt the report of the 22nd session of the Assembly of State Parties as a whole? I see no objection. The report of the 22nd session of the Assembly contained in document ICC ASP slash 22 slash L1 is adopted. The Secretariat will compile the report and the relevant annexes as soon as possible. And the final version will be posted on the official website of the court. May I take it that it is the wish of the Assembly to proceed on this basis? I see no objection. It is so decided. Distinguished delegates, we have thus concluded our consideration of the items on our agenda for the 22nd session. Before closing, I wish to indicate that the Coalition for the International Criminal Court has requested the opportunity to make a brief statement. Does the Assembly agree to invite the Coalition for the International Criminal Court to make a brief statement? 
I see no objection. I give the floor to the Coalition for the International Criminal Court. Madam President, Excellencies, dear colleagues, the Coalition for the ICC is the world's largest civil society partnership for global justice. We were represented at this ASP session by more than 200 individual human rights defenders from all around the world, many of whom traveled in spite of serious challenges, including visa and financial constraints. We welcome the expressions of support from many states parties during this session regarding the critical role of civil society and human rights defenders in the Rome Statute system. We urge the Assembly to ensure that civil society participation in its work is safeguarded and guaranteed, including in the next phase of the review process. We call on states' parties to remain vigilant and continue to defend and protect human rights defenders who are targeted because of their work to advance justice. Recalling the statement we made during the cooperation plenary, among others, we welcome that the Assembly took another step forward this year by producing a set of guidelines to ensure that human rights defenders can engage with the Assembly safely. We thank President Fernandez de Gourmendi for her leadership on this important issue. We look forward to working with the incoming presidency and bureau to advance these essential discussions, including on the implementation of the guidelines, with genuine and accessible consultations with those most concerned. The coalition stands ready to support and facilitate such engagement. We also reiterate our call to states' parties to ensure that the court has the resources it needs to implement its mandate in all situations. We welcome the increased willingness from states at this session to recognize the pressing needs of the court and to move away from zero nominal growth. We welcome the joint statement of 48 states' parties delivered by Costa Rica during the cooperation plenary, affirming that all victims deserve equal access to justice. Nonetheless, the Assembly continues to fail to set an annual budget that reflects the real and sustained investment needed to support the court's global mandate with full respect for victims and defense rights. Going forward, we urge states' parties to reframe the annual budget discussions and work urgently toward providing the court adequate and sustainable resources in its regular budget, along with the replenishment of the contingency fund. This is fundamental to best safeguard the court's independence and legitimacy and avoid politicization and selectivity or perceptions of inappropriate bias in the work of the court. Excellencies, we welcome states' parties' commitment to improving the ICC election process, and in particular, the historic adoption of the permanent due diligence or vetting procedure for all ICC elections. We extend our congratulations to the facilitators and to the ASP president for engaging with civil society and successfully implementing this significant initiative. We look forward to supporting the implementation in order to ensure that the procedure effectively assesses the high moral character of potential ICC leaders. This is a first among international institutions, which marks a positive momentum towards improving workplace culture and electing the best candidates. Further, we look forward to engaging with this assembly next year to improve national nomination procedures a critical building block to ensure the court has the most highly qualified bench. Reciprocal political agreements or vote trading have no place in ICC elections, and the coalition calls on states' parties to firmly commit from the very first step of nominations to fair, transparent, and merit-based elections. Finally, we would also like to bid farewell and thank President Fernandez de Gourmendi, Vice President Sequensova, and Ray, as well as ICC President of Mansky. We look forward to engaging with the, the ASP presidency-elect, the new bureau, and all states parties next year. This assembly is increasing by one member in February of next year, and we congratulate once again and welcome Armenia as the 124th state party to the statute. The coalition for the ICC reiterates its appreciation for the unique consultative status that we have with the court and with the assembly. We will work to ensure that the lived experience of affected communities informs the critical decisions that you make as guardians of the Rome Statute system and the values it represents. We will continue to seek your partnership to help safeguard the court's mandate and promise of justice for victims. Thank you for your attention.
I, <clears throat> I thank the coalition for these remarks and for highlighting some of the important uh, achievements uh, during this session of the, of the assembly. And thank you for your kind words as well. So now, distinguished representatives, distinguished president of the court, distinguished registrar and staff of the court, dear colleagues, dear friends, we are now at the closing of this 22nd session of the assembly of third parties and at the end of my three-year mandate as president of the assembly. So it is now time for me to say thank you and goodbye. It has been a tremendous honor to serve you during these three years, and indeed a huge privilege to be able to contribute a bit from this position to the consolidation and strengthening of the Rome Statute system. In 1998, I believed with many others that the court was an idea whose time had come. 25 years down the road, the idea has become a reality and it is more necessary than ever. Today, we need more justice, no less. Uh, yes, the court is not perfect. There is not such thing as a perfect institution, but it has already proved that it can deliver high quality justice and address effectively the harm suffered by victims. Like in 1998, it continues to be a beacon of hope for populations around the world. It is for the international community, and in particular for the state parties assembled here, to give to the court the cooperation, the resources, and the protection it needs for it to be able to deliver timely justice equally, without selectivity, as so many of you have emphasized, in all situations where it is called upon to act. I believe that during these three years, we have made good progress in making the Rome Statute system stronger and the court more resilient through concrete and incremental improvements. The review process was at the center of these efforts and inspired other initiatives. Once again, I thank all those who participated in the review that was a top priority of this assembly during my three years as president. I thank the representatives of the court, the assembly, civil society, and all facilitators and mandate holders who contributed to this review, as well as to the other work and initiatives of this assembly during these three years. I thank my colleagues in the bureau who accompanied me and trusted me throughout my mandate. I thank them all for their initiatives, their cooperation, and their time. I thank my dear Vice Presidents, Ambassador Bob Ray from Canada and Katerina Sequensova from the Czech Republic. You heard me many times saying that it was a delight to work with such great, smart, and friendly colleagues. Once more, I thank them for their constant support and cooperation, as well as for their hard work that kept the Hague and the New York communities fully involved in the work of the Assembly. My recognition also goes to their fantastic legal advisors, Beatrice Maillet and Martina Filipova, who assisted the presidency so much during these three years. The court is the raison d'etre of this assembly. During these three years, I always made sure that I consulted with the court on all initiatives or statements that could impact it directly. I thank the president and the former and current registrar who always received me, gave me their frank views, and sometimes their candid disagreement, nothing that a good cup of coffee, coffee could solve, could not solve. Thank you. And last but not least, thanks to the Secretariat, a wonderful small team of committed individuals that serves this assembly, its working groups and facilitations throughout the year in The Hague and New York. A special thanks and recognition to its director, Renan Villasis, who will leave us very soon. After many years of great service to this assembly, I wish him all the best in his future endeavors.
At the beginning, I said that it had been an honor and a privilege to serve this assembly. I have to conclude by saying that it has also been a great pleasure to be among so many friendly colleagues during these three years. I wish my successor, Ambassador Paibi Kaukoranta, her Vice Presidents Michael Kanu and Margareta Kasangana, as well as the incoming Bureau, a fruitful and successful three years term. I am delighted to pass the torch to such distinguished and committed individuals. As regards this session in particular, I would also like to thank the tellers for their important contribution to the election process, the interpreters, the translators, the conference officers, and other United Nations staff members who have assisted us in the organization of the assembly here at the United Nations headquarters. Dear colleagues and friends, I thank you all. Sorry, I'm sorry. There is a request from the floor for Vice President Bob Ray from Canada. I, I speak from my perch up here as the Vice President who's also stepping down to express my own personal appreciation to all those who've worked so hard over the last three years. I think we all, I certainly have felt very strongly that uh, the work we do is exceptionally important and I'm extremely grateful for, uh, for what uh, what the chances that I've been given to serve. But most importantly, uh, my dear Sylvia, I want to express my deep appreciation to you for your extraordinary leadership. Uh, uh, it has really been a pleasure working with you and also learning from you and seeing the extent of your dedication to the cause which has brought us together over the last two weeks and which continues to animate uh, the work of so many around the world. Uh, in uh, seeking justice. And so I've asked Beatrice Maillet if she could come forward. She's right behind you, just stepping up to give you a little present from us to express our great appreciation to you for what you've done and what you will continue to do. And thank you so, so very much. Well, thank you very much, very much. I really appreciate this. And uh, before I close the session, I would like, like to invite you to rise and observe one minute of silence dedicated to prayer or meditation, in particular for victims of atrocity crimes around the world. Thank you, and I now declare 
the 22nd session of the Assembly of State Parties to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court closed. I wish you all a happy hot season, happy holiday season, and safe travels to those returning to the Hague or capitals. I thank you very much. <laughs>